Hello friends, this is Durga again from IT Varsity. As part of uh, CCS Park and Hadoop Developer, so far I have covered uh, uh, Data Ingest, except uh, uh, Flume, which will be covered soon. And uh, then uh, as part of Transform Stage and Store, I haven't covered any of the learning objectives, but uh, we have uh, seen how, um, uh, we, uh, how we can set up Spark 1.2.1. Um, so that we can actually execute all these things and also we have seen how we can access spark shell spark sql um, uh, spark shell is scala based uh, uh, command line interface for, for spark py spark for python based uh, uh, python based command line interface for spark and also spark sql as part of this video i will be covering the first learning objective using python load data from HDFS and storing results back to HDFS using Spark. So you will be uh, seeing the syntax semantics also um, with, in, within the context of Spark. This is not a Python uh, programming language. Uh, uh, so I will uh, limit uh, the explanation of Python as much as possible and I will only emphasize uh, the important topics. And uh, uh, to uh, the documentation uh, which I will be using will be the link that is provided as part of the curriculum itself. So you can see Spark Overview 1.2.1 documentation. You can click on that and uh, it will take you to this page. And here, if you want to look at Spark SQL uh, uh, related documentation, you can click on Spark SQL. Um, graphics, MLib, Spark streaming are out of scope completely, so no need to worry about those things. And uh, then uh, there is a link under where to go from here. You can click on uh, uh, Spark programming guide if you want to develop either by using uh, Scala or Python. And by default, all the snippets will be shown in Scala, but you can click on Python and uh, the entire page will be refreshed with Python based content. Uh, if you click on Scala, it will be Scala based. If you click on Python on any, on any of the modules um, or any of the topics in this page, everything will be converted to Python. So you can see uh, the details about uh, uh, how you can import, um, which I have already covered in the last video. You have to say from and then the main module. And then in that whatever you want to import, uh, whatever classes you want to import, you can import them from the, from the module. Uh, so for uh, uh, typical uh, Python based uh, application development, we can use PySpark to import Spark context, Spark conf, etc. And uh, this is how you can submit the job. Uh, you can either say master local or master yarn, depending upon how you want to launch PySpark, which is also covered. Before getting into um, uh, the necessary program for loading data from HDFS and storing results back to HDFS, um, the main idea behind this is to read data from HDFS and also write back to HDFS. So I will not be getting into too many details about uh, the core concepts of Spark, which are RDD, resilient data, distributed data sets, transformations and ac actions as part of this um, video. You will be seeing that very, uh, uh, in very detail as part of the subsequent video when we see um, uh, the learning objectives such as join, calculate, aggregations, filtering data, etc. That's where you will see those transformations and actions in detail. In this, we will just see how we can actually read the data from HDFS and write back to HDFS using Spark Python, which is PySpark. So you can actually see the help here also. Uh, so you can read the file uh, like this based upon the um, context it will try to open the file from there if you want to explicitly say you can specify like this hdfs colon slash slash 
and give the path, uh, give the hdff uh, name node url and then path so let's go ahead and uh, start looking at the code this code is already in uh, uh, github also uh, you can go to my github account and follow me and uh, uh, start uh, getting the latest updates of my code so let's start running the programs so it, let me exit from here and also as part of the previous uh, introductions i said that uh, when you try to uh, when you integrate Py, uh, spark 1.2.1 with yarn there are some issues um, and you should always launch as local and that statement is little bit incorrect uh, i forgot to restart that's why it failed earlier when i tried um, integration of spark 1.2.1 with yarn as long as you uh, you stopped the uh, uh, the spark which comes out of the box and uh, co configure 1.2.1 with yarn with all the changes i have mentioned in my last uh, uh, in the video where uh, we set up spark 1.2.1 and then restart uh, your server or spark uh, uh, service uh, you have to restart uh, hadoop based components like sdfs and yarn once you restart those things or if you restart the vm itself it will work so i can run pyspark but i have to give the absolute path so that it launch uh, the 1.2.1 version of pyspark otherwise it will launch 1.3.0 so you can launch like this and it will it will be launched in yarn mode not in the uh, spark native mode and it will be successful uh, and you can get the version also as 1.2.1 so now it took a little bit of time around 30 seconds to 40 seconds and you can see that it launched uh, it got launched using yarn on top of spark 1.2.1 so now first thing you need to do is you have to um, uh, import the spark context but it is already available when you integrate everything with the necessary changes uh, that needs to be done so we need we don't need to import uh, spark context in this case but if you want you can do that so you can read the file with the command uh, sc dot text file and then you can say like this cloud era scoop import departments and hit enter it will create something called RDD. RDD stands for Resilient um, Distributed Dataset, which I will explain in detail later. But if you want to navigate through that collection, um, you have to assign it to a variable like this, data equal to sc.text file slash user slash cloud era scoop import departments. And uh, hit enter now data will have that rdd um, it's uh, uh, python is not uh, strictly typed uh, strictly type safe it's loosely type safe so you need not define the data type for the variable it will assume the relevant data type in some cases you might have to cast but typically you don't need to define the data types or uh, say val or var like you do in scala or some other programming language so the data type of this variable will be determined by this one and by the output of this statement. So now uh, the RDD is in that data. If you want to read it and if you want to print it, you can uh, write a for loop. It's a Python for loop for i in data dot. And then uh, this uh, RDD have, uh, it's, it's a custom class of Python and it has many methods like uh, collect take uh, they, they are all uh, they work on top of um, any of the collections including rdd and you if you want to get all the data from the uh, from that collection you can say for i in data dot collect and semicolon this is the syntax and then you have to indent indentation is very important in python you don't see curly braces 
to define the scope of your if condition or uh, for uh, for loop or while loop or events of the functions it's all about indentations so if you indent evenly all those lines which are indent uh, um, uniformly will be considered uh, part of one scope okay so in this case i am just printing as part of this loop and hit enter if you want to type multiple lines you can type keep on typing uh, uh, with the proper indentation and it will take care of uh, the scope automatically and then if you don't want to type anything you just enter uh, you just hit enter again and it will um, execute that uh, script python is also uh, it follows lazy evaluation it will not uh, evaluate until it sees uh, uh, some sort of commands until then it will just build the flow and once you type certain type of commands like print and all until then it will not execute the program it's called lazy evaluation again it is not that important as long as you understand how to write the scripts and all those things and probably you might be familiar with those buzzwords like lazy evaluation other than that uh, it might not be very important if in a practical exam if it is a theoretical exam probably there might be questions on that otherwise it might not be so now we have seen the data so we are able to read data from hdfs so this path which we have specified as part of sc.txt file it's an hdfs path so if i copy this path and uh, then run lsltr on linux file system it will not return anything because it's it, uh, it by default looking into um, hdfs path because of the changes we have made while setting up the 1.2.1 if you if there is a hadoop cluster available for it it will try to look up in the hadoop only by default if you want to explicitly say to look at local files for example in this case let's say you want to read the file uh, departments.json okay in that case what you have to do is you can use the same command it does not make any difference you can say file column slash 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 home slash cloud cloudera slash departments dot json and now it it is successful it uh, means it is trying to read that file from local file system you don't see home cloudera departments dot json in hadoop or hdfs by running hadoop fs command and if you want to print again you can run this command and hit enter and you can see the data in that file so um, by default it used the hdfs and also we have seen how we can read the data from local files and also if you have multiple uh, clusters if you want to give fully qualified path for your cluster you can do that also so in that case again i am going back to the previous uh, uh, file which is departments it is a hdfs path copy hadoop fs minus ls paste it actually read from this location now if you want to specify fully qualified path with a name node in hadoop fs command you can specify like this hdfs your name node ip address and then name uh, name node uh, port number which is 8020 by default if it does not work you have to go to etc um, uh, hadoop conf and uh, then uh, you will have corset.xml file and you can get the port numbers from there and then user cloudera scoop import departments so you can see the uh, files by specifying the fully qualified path also and to get this port number you can go to etc hadoop cons core side dot xml and this is the parameter which you need to look at and this is the path you should use or this is the url you should use to access hdfs using fully qualified path 
that being said in this command also we have to say fdfs slash slash quick start dot cloud error 8020 and hit enter now you can actually print the output without any issues you now we have seen how to read the data from local file system from hdfs and from hdfs with fully qualified path and also it supports uh, if you go back to the documentation it supports uh, some cloud based uh, protocols also like s3 it is out of the scope for the exam so i will not be emphasizing on that but if you if you have data on amazon cloud and if you want to read the data to process in spark you can say sc.txt file and give um, something uh, uh, the protocol is s3 n or s3 column slash slash and then you have to give the uh, s3 bucket and files etc so that's how you can read the uh, data from the files in uh, hdfs we just read the text file and uh, we will see a uh, few other uh, uh, file formats also like sequence file and also how to read the data from uh, uh, tables in hive using uh, pyspark um, and also we will see how we can actually read json data as well so i will be covering quite a few other formats also in the subsequent videos that being said i hope you are enjoying the content on my channel if you like this video please click on the like button if you uh, want to provide feedback please use the comment section of the video if you have any technical questions about uh, uh, spark you can actually go to stack overflow raise a question and tag it properly and i will be closely monitoring it and i will be glad to respond to best of my knowledge also i have a linkedin group called hadoop certifications if you are interested in um, um, discussions with other people while preparing for the certification uh, any certification uh, in future you can send me the request to join uh, and uh, also if you are not subscribed to my channel yet please do so you will get to see a lot more content like this over time that being said thank you bye